but kind of the umbrella, I guess, for me is, is just our lack of um, execution in, you know, a lot of different situations. Um, things that I, I know that we've talked about, we've worked on, and, you know, we've got to be more focused in the course of a game, and we've got to communicate to one another in order to do those things. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't just one or two things. It was, it was a number of things. And we still, we put ourselves in a position where we have a chance to win. I was obviously happy with the way we battled back in the fourth quarter. Um, but we made too many mistakes relative to, you know, execution on the game plan. Welcome back, Hawks fans. It's your boy Bryce Lewis back at it again for another Believe in Hawks episode. Second one of the week coming up right here as the Hawks have played in two games to start the regular season and hasn't gotten the result they wanted 0-2 to start the year. I just finished watching the game against the Knicks where they lost 126 to 120 in a game where Knicks got hot, but also uh, Hawks had defensive lapses and they just couldn't get back and get over the hump to eventually take the lead once again on the Knicks. And now they start 0-2 with them going to Milwaukee this Sunday and then turning around Monday back at State Farm Arena playing the Minnesota Timberwolves and Anthony Edwards. But we're going to talk about what I've seen from these last two games, what I've liked, what I don't like, and how I feel about the team right now in this early O2 hole to start the year. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to all you guys listening. I have hit 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Very much appreciate it. Give yourself a round of applause. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. You know, I'm, I have a passion for sports. I have a passion for this. And so for you guys to, you know, have over 500 people invest into maybe watching me, you know, being a part of all my content, Falcons, Hawks, whatever it is, it means a lot to me. So definitely appreciate it and everything like that. And, you know, we'll, we'll try to grow it through the audio wise. My audio listeners, don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews for the pod as well. Get some love over there. Really start growing that and everything under the sun. So just very appreciative of all of you. And now we're on our next goal to 1,000 subscribers coming up. So I'm excited to see how that goes. And you know, eventually I might be able to start making some money off of this. So uh, that would be ideal. That would be extremely ideal, especially in today's economy. But you know, just want to give y'all guys a quick thank you before we move on. And you know, also if you want to follow me on social media, follow me out on Twitter at Bricey underscore 2K. B-R-I-C-E-Y underscore 2K for my audio listeners for all my Hawks and Falcons tweets. I try to tweet during the games, try to give my live updates on what's happening, what my thoughts are as they are happening. But let's go ahead and dive right into it, guys. So, Hawks, we're going to talk about the Knicks game because this is the game that just happened. And we'll either see this, actually, you'll see this tomorrow for sure. So, by the time you'll see this, it'll be the next day. But we're gonna, that just happened here, and I'm going to talk about the game. And basically, it's like this. Hawks came into this game. Charlotte game did not go the way you wanted it. You started off good, got cold, couldn't make shots. Trey and Johnson couldn't make shots. Your defense started letting you down. Charlotte hit shots. They won the game. This game was a bit different. Hawks got behind early and just were fighting the whole game. Now, I have to give the New York Knicks credit. They were unconscious from three. Dante DiVincenzo, Jalen Brunson were both excellent. R.J. Barrett had a big night. You know, you had, and, and really, this is with Julius Randle not really giving you a lot in this game. You know, he he really didn't do a lot. I mean, even, and even, you know, Tom Thibodeau didn't even play him a lot of the fourth quarter because of that. I mean, I, I think that's that's something that we have to point out. He only had 17 points, which a lot of those came, which really he only had 14 after those free throws. I mean, Mitchell Robinson was was a guy who was very active, uh, you know, creating, uh, just creating havoc in the paint for the Hawks when they tried to drive. I felt like the Hawks over dribbled at times. I felt like the Hawks, you know, I, I said that they need to make decisions quicker because this happened last game also against the Hornets where you have that shot blocking center who just is really causing havoc to this team. And I think they need to do better with that. Uh, but yeah, Jalen Brunson had 31, RJ with 26, David Chensel with 16 off the bench. So it was, it was one of those types of nights for sure for, for the Knicks. And they just got the offensive production they needed from them. And they just were able to hold the Hawks off. Every time the Hawks made a run, the Knicks responded. And so those are those type of games where it's just, if you see that one run to get you over the top and the Hawks couldn't get that in their home opener. I mean, Trey finished with 18, but on 4-16 shooting, I'll get to him in a minute. Jante, I felt like played better as the game went on, kind of started being more active on different ends of the, on different, uh, on the defensive end of the floor, started being just active in different elements of the game. And then also finished with 18, 
DeAndre Hunter gave us a really good game after having Look at this. I'm talking about going upstairs. And it happened so quickly. He turns his corner, gets, slips the screen. Bay only gave us five points tonight. We've been talking about Trey. We've been talking about Compella. But Bay giving us five points tonight after the expectations that we had for him coming into the season, especially for him coming into a contract year. You expected more so far out of him. Obviously, it's still early. I'm not panicking. But you definitely need more from Bay. Because right now, he's playing less minutes than Jalen Johnson, who I'll get to in a minute as well, as he has been playing extremely well. He had 11 off the bench and nine rebounds, almost had a double-double tonight. Bogey had a pretty solid game with 16 off the bench. Kongu was okay tonight, and then AJ in eight minutes at six points. I know people were asking questions about why is maybe, you know, why he haven't had why he hasn't been playing more potentially, and everything, you know. So we're gonna talk about all that. So let me go into it first. Uh, so let's talk about Trey first. Actually, let's talk about Trey first. So Trey has done this. He did this a lot last year, where he'll just have these stretches of games where he's just struggling to find his shot. Sometimes it's the three-point shot. Sometimes the three is not falling for him. That is something that I think has been an issue. Uh, I, I think at times he forces some shots, which I think is something that he, you know, we've all been saying he needs to work on. Just working on not forcing shots, trying to get the best quality shot he can get up. You know, just just things like that. Um, I, I think that overall, I think the the team needs him to get back to an efficient scoring. Like the biggest thing for him is that he's been inefficient, and he needs to become more efficient because that'll help the offense. But he also has to know when to take shots. He can't take threes in untimely moments. He has to know when to take a three, when to take a certain shot, when to take that a shot that is necessary. Um, he had over uh, 10 assists tonight. So in terms of getting the ball to people, he did a good job of that tonight. And something I have acknowledged, I now just even in the Hornets game, is that Trey has been more active defensively. Trey has been trying to do other things outside of score, which is something you have to commend him on because one thing he was knocked for was that all he was was an offensive guy. He didn't he didn't score the ball. I mean, he does still score the ball, but he didn't play defense. He didn't do the other things that are considered winning plays. And I feel like he's tried to do that. I said earlier, he has taken like three, four charges this year that he has not gotten and has gone the other way. And that's something that, again, I mean, how many times have you seen Trey on the floor taking charges and dealing with that? So, Obviously, he's been trying to impact the game in different ways, but the Hawks really need him to go back to being the Trey Young we all know and love. We need that Trey Young who could give you 30. We, we need that bench at Trey Young game on efficient shooting, you know. And obviously, he gets his points through free throws too, but, you know, I think for him, he, he needs to, you know, obviously shoot the ball better. And that, I think, will do a very uh, go a long ways for this Hawks team if he can do that moving forward and, and just, you know, figuring out what he needs to do. I, I brought up last year the Boston series. First two games struggled a lot. In the last four, he played great. Him and Quinn Snyder were working together trying to figure out how can we get you to be effective, and it ended up working for him. So this is the same way. Now, obviously, it's a little bit different. You're working with a new system that you can see this team is still trying to get adjusted to, still trying to get on the same page about. I know fans don't want to hear it, but it's true. There's growing pains that come with that. They are not as smooth as they need to be, but there's things that you have seen in these first two games, or at least I've seen in these first two games, that give me some positive uh, positive energy moving forward about this team and what potentially could become become part of that. Obviously, Capella missed two big buckets tonight. That was that was tough. Two alleys, man. That was not alley. Well, he missed just one dunk in one alley, and it was just tough because those those buckets would have been huge. And it's just tough missing those shots. I know a lot of people are, especially with Quinn in 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 you know, as the guy, I think a lot of people acknowledge that, you know, Clint isn't really a Quinn Snyder type of guy, but I mean, he's just a center and gives you what you give. He gives you double doubles on a nightly basis. You know, he, he gives you the thir almost 15 rebounds a game. He gives you 13, 15 points a game, depending on how many putbacks and alleys he gets. You know, I, I've noticed that Clint has tried to be more aggressive offensively and that has created some frustration because he'll miss shots that are close to the rim and that frustrates the fan base. That makes people frustrated. It stresses them out. Um, it's been tough to see that. And though, like I said, I mean, there's no way you can defend what happened tonight. All you can say is that, 
I mean, he, he, I mean, out of the two centers tonight, he played better than Nakonga. I mean, that, that's just the truth of the matter and, and everything. But still, you know, him missing those shots at the end really hurt hurt the comeback attempt. So, I mean, obviously that's something that has to be worked on moving forward. Bay has to give us more than five points tonight. I mean, when he came into the starting lineup, the reason why he was put in this lineup is because he was supposed to bring that shooting that he had last year, shooting over 41% when he came to the Hawks, and just being able to stretch the floor, provide the spacing, because when he played stretch four for the Hawks last year, especially offensively, you could see how the effect that had. This year, we have not had that at all right now. We have not had Bay basically make really much of an impact outside of the fourth quarter of the last game in Charlotte, where he had a couple of and ones to help us get back into that game. But I mean, I've seen that, 35 on he hasn't, he hasn't done much. He hasn't by Trey on the box. I mean, he hasn't provided to us what, we, can fly, man. Let me tell what you. we thought we were going to get when we put him into this lineup. And so I think that's been really disappointing. But and so we definitely need more from him. But on the bright side, Jalen Johnson has been fantastic for the Hawks. He has been great. He has literally you can you can feel the impact of Jalen Johnson when he plays. You can feel his impact on how, on how he plays the game. Like you you know of Jalen Johnson that defensively he was he was a dog night. He I mean he was defending tonight. He was moving his feet. Um, you know he's always trying to go for the shot block. Obviously, he had his fast break dunks. You know, he had that big dunk in the first quarter on two Knicks, you know, blowing them up. I mean, you 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 saw you saw the talent. You see, you see what we see. You know, Jalen Johnson, man, he he's making it hard not to start him. It, it, it's gonna become a decision that Quinn's gonna have to make at make at some point. Because it's hard not to stop him after what you've been seeing from him. Now, the big thing is this. If you've actually looked at the last two games, Jalen Johnson has played 29 and 30 minutes. He has played 10, 11, 12 minute stretches straight. So clearly Quinn Snyder knows when he's in there, he's effective and he needs to play. He's also finished in these last couple of these first two games. He's finished these games. So clearly you can see the confidence that they have in Jalen. You can see clearly they know, okay, Jalen can really help us win this game impact us. So a year ago, they didn't feel like Jalen was ready. And so they would take him out. Now they feel like he's ready. And you're seeing that with the way he plays because you see the confidence that he's playing with. You can see the growth that he's playing with. You can see the progress that he has made from year two to year three. And we wanted him to continue to build on that, continue to grow on that as well. So it's big for him to continue to do that. I mean, Jalen Johnson, like I said, has been one of the, the bright spots of this team so far, even in his 0-2 start. So, you know, big for him to be able to play the way he, like I said, he's played and, you know, do what he's done. So that's been big as well. But overall, um, you know, we, we got to get more from the guys. I mean, tonight defensively, I feel like we were, it was like, it was a bit of a letdown. Like that was something they've been focused on. Cause I know Quinn Snyder views it like this. If this team runs and this team could get turnovers, they, like I said, have one of the best potentials to be one of the best fast break teams in the league. And the Hawks definitely seem like a team that their offense will work so much better when they're able to get stops and run. They've talked about the ball, getting the ball off the net has slowed them down because they know the strength offensively this team is to run. And so that's something that they have been trying to do. But in this game, they weren't able to do. They weren't able to, to get the Knicks to turn the ball over as much as they would have liked. And I think that's something that was evident. I mean, if you look at the stats, pretty much the stats tonight, both teams shot 48%. The Knicks shot great from three, 45%, 23s in this game. It's going to be hard to beat a team when they shoot 23s and make them. Hawks only made 12 tonight. You know, they had more free throws. The turnovers, 16 to 14. You know, you really get some turnovers late to get you back into the game. But overall, turnovers around the same. The Knicks had 30 assists to the Hawks, 28. Rebounding, 40, 40, 45, 44. Six, both teams had six blocks. I mean, it was a pretty even game outside of the three-point shots and just, at the end of the day, making plays. And like I said, their guys were on it tonight. The Knicks got to give them credit. They played well tonight. They did what they needed to do to come into Atlanta and get the win. And, and that's just as simple as it gets. They, they, they did what they need to do tonight. And the Hawks have to regroup, and they got to figure out what they what they got to do to, to really get back on the ship so they can 
right, you know, try to turn this around. Like I said, Milwaukee, a team that a lot of people were expecting to be an NBA Finals team potentially this year. Uh, it's kind of like I said, we got to go to Milwaukee, and that's going to be a tough game. And then the Hawks got to be ready because you don't want to go down 0 3. Don't want this hole to get even bigger because it feels like right now you're just trying to get that first one to get out of that hole and then see what happens, you know? So, Hawks right now are just not trying to have the hole get bigger. Um, some good things I am seeing from the team, though. I am seeing that I do feel like the ball movement is better. I feel like some of the plays that have been made have just been good. I can tell with them trying to learn how to play together offensively and defensively in Quinn Snyder's system, there has been some hesitation. I feel like, you know, it's easy just to shoot or drive. But I think when it comes to passing, and that may also be more because of, like I said, the system they're trying to run since they're trying to have more motion. I think that, like, they're doing some good things well, but they just – they it's just it feels like they just need they're they're close it it literally just feels like the hawks are close but they're not there yet with what they are trying to do one big emphasis that i've heard from the coaching staff these last two games has been defense shifting because listen this is something i noticed with charlotte too is that they'll start moving the ball and snyder wants his defense to be more aggressive and that can lead to turnovers, which the Hawks have been able to create. But the issue with such an aggressive defense is that you're going to leave guys open. You can see some of the double teams, they are really clapping down, which I think the, the Knicks took advantage of and the, and the Hornets took advantage of as well. And because in the, in the key to make that defense work is you have to have great communication. You have to switch really, really well. You have to be able to shift really, really well. In the second half tonight, I think they did a better job of that, but there was still some lapses that hurt. Quinn Snyder mentioned in the game plan, they just didn't execute some things correctly, and they had way too many mistakes. But like I said, they were able to get some turnovers. Like I said, defensively, like I said, people, I feel like a lot of guys are putting in effort defensively. I don't think this is a team that you can tell it's a lack of days school defensive effort because there's a difference from being just having a bad defensive night and then also just not having great effort. I don't think the Hawks – didn't put effort. I think the Hawks played with effort. I just think they just did not execute well. That's just as simple as it gets right there when it comes to what happened tonight against the Knicks. So I think that's something that, you know, has to be better, clearly. Um, they have to improve that. They have to figure out just, you know, get comfortable with what they're trying to do. It's like I, 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 was, I was saying this earlier to somebody. You got to – when you have a new system, it's the same thing you hear in the NFL, too. Put a new system in. You can run it. You can still win with it. You can be good with it. But you'll always notice, like, something just sometimes just isn't clicking. Something just isn't there yet. Because it's not something you're just going to know overnight or do overnight. You hear it all the time. Every NBA team says every single game is a chance to get better, is a chance to improve, is a chance to get a culture, is a chance to get an identity, a chance – to, to, to get those rotations crisper, a chance to have better communication. Every game is an opportunity to improve that. And right now, I think the Hawks are going through that with this new system that Quinn is trying to uh, implement, where they're just they're trying to get there. And it's just something they got to continue to work, continue to work, and continue to work. It's tough, trust me, because because you because you lost some games, and so you know, question you're going to have is will the team stay bought in if they lose more games? You know, you are putting something in new. You want the players to believe in what they're doing and believe that this will lead to results. And right now you're not seeing those results. So what does that mean for you as a team and as your players? But I do think, like I said, some of the things I've seen, there are some promising things that are there. So I think if you're the Hawks and Trey Young said this in, during the press conference, he said, listen, I'm going to keep believing what Quinn is teaching. I'm not going to waver from that because you can't, you can't. Like, cause if, because if you, if you don't, if you, because the thing is, is like, if you don't believe it's like, then what do you have? I mean, there's 80 games left. There, you, there's, you, you, there's no way you give one a season. There are so many teams that have started 0 and 2 in the main playoffs, been top five seed, top four seeds. So this season, by any stretch of the imagination, is not over. So we got to stop with the this season is done, this season is over. I just think we hate losing. And so you just kind of feel like when you lose, oh, everything's over, but it's not over. It's not anywhere close to over. This team has plenty of games, plenty of time. It's like baseball. You can start 0-6 in your first two series and still be a 100-win team or a 90-win team. Like, 
it, it, there's just so many games left that you can't say it's over because you're basically just assuming your team will never have a stretch of games where they'll play well. And I get it. The last two years, Hawks have been battling 500, and it feels like, man, you know, we've, we've been close and we've been dealing with all these things. And, you know, I really hope this year was the year we could start fast and then really just build on that. And we haven't started fast. So I understand the doubt. I understand the questions. I understand the concern from a lot of Hawks fans. And I definitely, definitely get that. But the biggest thing has to happen is that first, Trey needs to find a rhythm. Bay needs to be more, needs to be much more active offensively. We need more from Shadi. He has to give us more if he's going to be starting. Has to. Or else, you know, we're talking about, people were talking about DeAndre Hunter. Uh, I don't think if Quinn makes a change, DeAndre Hunter is coming out the lineup, guys. It may be Shadi. And maybe that could be good for him. He played well off the bench. He hasn't played well as a start. Maybe he's just better in that position. I don't know. But if, if Quinn made a change, I think it'd be Bay who's coming out of there than Jalen. I mean, not Jalen, but then Hunter. So, just saying. But, overall, I think, you know, got to have Bay play better. Got to have Trey play better. You're going to need more from Yeka Kangu. Uh you're going to want him. I want him to take more threes. We saw the three-point shot improve. I want a Yeka to take more threes. I feel like there have been times he's been at the top of the key and they have given him space. I want him to shoot. Be aggressive. Quinn Snyder has given everybody the green light. Shoot. Be confident in your shot. I want a Yeka to do it. Make them have to defend your three. The key for Yeka for me is that if he can hit mid-ranges in three-point shots, now when they do pick and roll with a Yeka Akangu, you have to defend that jump shot, which will open up the lane. If he just keeps rolling every time, the team is going to kick. He's just going to keep rolling to the rim and then just try to figure out how to defend that with whoever the guy coming off the pick and roll is. If he can start hitting some shots, I think that will be big for him. Just, you know, moving on into um, in the future. So I want him to be more active in that regard. Um Overall, like I said, it's tough being on to. And I think the Hawks, like I said, have to figure some things out. You got Milwaukee coming in. Like, you got Milwaukee, you got to go to Sunday. They're tough. I mean, Damian Lillard just had a big game 30 plus points, man. Damian Lillard. I mean, we know what type of player he is. To be honest, we know what the Greek freak can do. We know this Bucks team is a really good team. Hawks got to be ready to play. It's, it's kind of crazy to say it's a must win game. But it is it, – it gives you that feel of a must win. It gives you that feel of a we, – we got we to gotta come out Sunday. And we need to get this game. One and two sounds way better than, one, than uh, uh, zero and three. It just sounds better. Because now you just need a winning streak, just a three-game winning streak just to get back to 500. You, you win this game. You got the back-to-back. Ant coming in town. Timberwolves swept you last year. You want to try to get a win against them this year. Maybe by the end of Monday, you can get back to 500. But you're going against two quality playoff teams that are in, respectively in both conferences that people are expecting to make the playoffs. So as a team, these are big tests for you. I think we're going to learn a lot about the Hawks out of those two games. And Quinn Snyder mentioned this before in some of the sound bites they played on the pregame show, and things he's mentioned in press conferences. We're going to go through some ups and downs and trials and tribulations. Every single team does it. Every single team does it. Every single team does it. Every team's going to have a uh, two-game, three-game losing streak. It's just part of it. But how do you respond? How do you bounce back? How do you improve? How do you... How do you... You know... Come back as a team. That's going to be the biggest question I think with this team moving forward is how do they respond? And this, like I said, two game set is going to tell us exactly that. How are they going to respond? Are they going to be able to bounce back? Are they going to be able to play well? We'll have to see. So I, I feel like, you know, it's tough for sure. You hate to see what you've seen, but at the same time, this is part of the NBA. Season's not over, and you got to figure it out, you know. And I want to say one thing too, man, because after the Hornets game, I really didn't like 
what a lot of Hawks fans were saying, kind of making it seem like, oh, my God, we lost to the Hornets. Oh, we're a bad team. Oh, oh my God, the Hornets are so bad. How do we lose? Listen, we usually play the Hornets four times a year. Every team, including whoever wins the championship this year, will probably lose to a team that will be in the lottery because it's 82-game season. Every game is different. Every night is different. Someone could go off. Someone could have an off night. You could have injuries. We got to stop overreacting to losses like that. Now, obviously, in the grand scheme, yes, we're 0-2 right now. But, listen, Charlotte got players, too. And we got to stop acting like if their good players play good, that that's shameful. <laughs> like, that. <laughs> like let's – like, guys, like, I get we don't want to lose to Charlotte. I completely get it. We can win this season series still 3-1. Charlotte's been a thorn in the Hawks' side. It kind of reminds me of Cleveland a couple years ago. I remember when Cleveland, when they weren't great initially, were given the Hawks problems and people were frustrated. And then the next year, I think they all they beat the Hawks in the opener. And I remember people were like, why can't we beat – they didn't beat them in the opener. They beat them in the second or third game of the season. And people were like, why can't we beat Cleveland? They're a trash team. They're a garbage team. That year – until injuries happened, Cleveland was primarily a top four seed in the Eastern Conference. And I was like, this is what we can't. That's why I say you really can't. We can sit here and say Charlotte's not going to be because we, we really don't. We won't know until the season is played out. And even if that's the case, like, listen, every all 30 teams, every elite team is going to lose to a bad team. <laughs> that's literally all you don't want for the Hawks is to lose the season series to the Hornets. At least win two games. Realistically, if you're better than them, you need to win the season series 3-1 at least. But to go crazy over that is insane to me, man. Because it's like it's like we forget what the NBA season is like. We forget all these things can happen during the NBA season. We just act like every game is like, if we don't win this game, we're not going to be able to be good. And I'm like, that's not at all the case, guys. We got to learn how to not overreact. I understand being frustrated about a loss. I completely get that. And I will always understand that. But you also got to look at, listen, the season just started. Let's see. Is this a loss that could show us of what could come? Or is this just one of those games that you lose and you and then, you know, you play them again later year, you blow them out or you win that game and then you win, go against them again, you win the next game and boom, now you're up to one of the season series. So, like I said, now it looks like it hurt, it's hurting the Hawks right now. And I completely get that, like I said, but I'm not going to overreact. I'm not going to start throwing in the towel. I still think this team can bounce back. I think there's some good things that we've seen. There's some bad things that we've seen, things that needs to be cleaned up. Quinn Snyder's acknowledged it. Trey has acknowledged it. And now it's just about getting this team on the same page, getting used to the scheme, being able to do what they need to do, execute game plans correctly. If they can do all that, I think the Hawks will be fine and they'll be able to get back on the ship, get back to 500 eventually or 500, and then we'll see how good this team can really be. And listen, if things don't work out with players and rosters and things like that, hey, guys, the trade deadline still hasn't passed. Changes still could be made. But we're going to have to see, man. Quinn Snyder has a very interesting – it's going to be very interesting to see how this team responds and how Quinn Snyder gets this team to respond to being down 0-2 early in the season. So we're going to have to see what happens. But that's all I got for you guys today on Believe in Hawks. I appreciate you guys, again, once again, tuning in. Get like me be part of your day uh, doing the podcast. Like I said, appreciate you guys again for getting me to 500 subscribers. It means a lot to me to be able to, you know, have that many people willing to listen to me, willing to talk Hawks with me and everything like that. My question before I let you guys go is how are you feeling after the Hawks 0-2 start? Are you encouraged? Are you disencouraged? What do you think needs to improve? What do you think needs to be fixed? Drop it in the comments, whatever you, whatever your audio podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, drop it in the comments, wherever. You can do it on Twitter, on the Twitter link, all that. We all want to have a conversation, healthy conversation with all y'all about what's happening with this team right now. So, Really, like I said, really excited to see see what happens. We're, we're going to be back. Um, Agent. Keeps the dribble alive. Spin move to the basket. Over Richards no. for two. It's happened in the next two games that the Hawks have coming up. And we're going to have to see what happens. Uh, and hopefully this team can get back in track. And maybe we'll be talking about this team being back at 500 with two impressive wins under the belt. But that's all I got for you guys today. It's your boy Bryce Lewis. See you next time.